guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my five favorite houseplants for anyone who is a beginner with houseplants. And I'm so excited because this video is a collaboration with Nicole from My Clean Leaves. I love watching her videos, she's hilarious. She has way more plants than I do. So if you're here from Nicole's channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I usually post videos about decluttering and minimalism and simple living, but I love houseplants. And you can often find houseplant videos on my channel. I do have a few houseplant tours on here that I will have linked up above. So today, Nicole and I are both going to be sharing our top five plants, and they're both five different plants, so make sure that you go check out her video as well. And I just wanna start out by saying that everybody's experience is going to be different with plants. A huge factor in which houseplants you find easy is your climate, so I live in a very dry, very cold climate. It is currently minus 40 degrees Celsius. So houseplants are a little bit of a struggle to keep alive here. So obviously if you live in a really humid and hot climate, you might have a totally different experience with houseplants and which ones are easy and which ones are hard to keep alive. So these are just the five houseplants that I have found in my own personal experience to be super easy to keep alive. And these are the five houseplants that I always recommend to people when they are wanting to get started with houseplants. So the very first houseplant is a pothos. So this is one of the first plants that I ever got. This, mine is super long. It's probably like four feet long. And I love these. I just love vining plants. I love things that you can watch grow. And this one is so fun to watch grow. Because, like this is a whole new shoot right here. Um, honestly, this grew so much more, but I kept cutting pieces off and propagating them and then like giving them away. Kind of wish that I had just left it alone because then I'd have this huge pothos by now, but it's all good. I still love this plant. And pothos come in so many different varieties. And I would say golden pothos are the most common and probably the easiest when you get into variegations. Sometimes they're a little bit more tricky, but there's marble queen pothos, there's neon pothos, and then there's satin pothos. There's tons of different types and they all look different. I have several, I think I have like three or four in my house and I love them all. They do thrive in a spot with lots of sun, but if you're looking for a plant that's gonna be on a shelf, maybe a couple feet away from a window or something like that, pothos is definitely an option. It might just not grow as fast as it would in a really sunny spot, but they are super easy going and they let you know when they're thirsty. The leaves will just start to droop a little bit. I really only water mine less than once a week, probably once every other week. And I like to just give it a good soak and then wait like 10 to 14 days again to water it. And then like I mentioned, I love to propagate my pothos. They are one of the easiest plants to propagate, which is super fun if you're wanting to get into propagation. Okay, the next plant is snake plants. So this guy is huge. This is another one of the very first plants that I ever got. And snake plants are so easy going. They're one of the few plants that really can survive in a low light room. All plants do need some sunlight, like they're, they're probably gonna die a slow death if you put them in a bathroom with zero sunlight. But my snake plant lived a lot of its life in our bedroom and we would often forget to even open the blinds during the day so it maybe got a little bit of sun a couple times a week and it grew a ton during that time. So they're super easy going, they're super forgiving, but they do not want to be watered. If you feel like your snake plant is dying, it's there's a really, really good chance that that means that you're actually overwatering it. I only water my snake plant maybe once a month. You're really not gonna run into any issues with underwatering a snake plant. It might just not grow as fast, but I don't think that you can really kill a snake plant by underwatering it. But if you do overwater it, then it will just kind of die a slow death. And obviously people are gonna have different experiences. There's gonna be someone that says that they water their snake plant twice a week and it's doing awesome. In my personal experience, I hardly ever water my snake plant and, and that's what most people say that works well for their snake plants as well. And there are also tons of different types of snake plants. To be honest, I don't know all of the names of them, but they do come in lots of varieties, variegated leaves and different shades of green. So check those out. They're all super easy to care for. And then the next plant, and this is one that I think is an underrated plant. This is a wandering Jew. This guy, I started from a couple tiny little propagations, like maybe three pieces like this just a couple months ago. And he has probably doubled in size. And it does have a couple leaves on here that are looking a little bit rough, but I think that's just part of the process because they did start as propagations. And this is another plant that's gonna grow into like a big vine. And if I wanted to, I could snip these pieces off and plant them back in the soil to make this a fuller plant. I'm kind of going for like the long look right now, to be honest. And I also do have two different types of Wandering Jew in here. One of these is variegated and one of them is not. You will find that if you have 
have a variegated plant and it's not getting enough sunlight, it'll tend to lose its variegation. So that's kind of what's going on here. But I think in the summer, it'll probably come back when we have more sunlight here. But these guys are super easy. They grow so fast. This is probably the fastest growing plant I've ever had and they propagate so, so, so easily. And I would say the care for a wandering Jew is super similar to Pothos. They like sunlight, but they'll do well kind of in any location as long as there's some sunlight. And then they just like to be watered maybe once a week or once every other week whenever the soil has dried out. And then the next plant is a ZZ plant. So this guy is really similar to a snake plant in its care. This is another plant that I think is kind of underrated. They're a little bit harder to find maybe than a snake plant or a pothos. But I was able to find this guy for like $11 and it's grown a ton since I got it. And I don't think that they're necessarily known to be fast growers. I don't know if I just like lucked out. I'm not really sure. Um, but I treat this pretty much exactly the same as my snake plant. This is in my bedroom right now, so it doesn't get a lot of light. I often go a day or two just forgetting to open the curtains in my bedroom. So it gets kind of like diffused light through my white curtains. These definitely will live in a low light room. So again, not in a room with zero sunlight. You're not really gonna find plants that survive in zero sunlight for a long time unless you have grow lights on them. But this is one of the few plants that I would say is a truly low light plant. And I also don't really water this guy pretty much ever, like maybe once a month or maybe twice a month. And he's kind of growing wonky and like sideways, but I kind of like it. I think he's cute. And the next plant I want to talk about is my majesty palm, which is way too big for me to pick up. And this is one plant that some people say is super easy and then other people say isn't super easy. I have had a lot of brown tips on my majesty palm in the past, but I find that it gives you pretty good warning signs when it's not happy and it gives you a lot of time to correct your care and you kind of get a second chance with it. In the past, I had probably half of the leaves turn brown just because it was getting too much sunlight and I wasn't giving it enough water, but I just trimmed all of the brown off. It bounced right back and it's super happy again. I will say that it is one plant that does not like to dry out. So you don't wanna let the soil dry out too much. You also don't wanna give it too much water. So there's kind of a fine line, but I basically watch. And as soon as the very top of it looks dry, then I water it again. So I'm not letting all of the soil all the way down dry out. And then I do keep a pebble tray underneath it with water in it just so that there's extra moisture. And I do try to mist my majesty palm like once a day is my goal. Sometimes it's more like once a week. And that's not necessary, but it's gonna be a lot happier if you do that. So the Majesty Palm is probably the least easy of these ones, but I wanted to include it because it is one that's really affordable. And if you're looking for a really big plant, it is a good option. And then my Majesty Palm sits about probably 12 feet away from a bright west facing window. So it gets good light, but mine doesn't like being in direct sun. That's when the leaves end up getting really burnt. But I do think that the Majesty Palm is a plant that any beginner could do. And like I said, just pay attention into it and if you're finding that it's getting brown tips just make sure that it's not drying out so those are my top five suggestions for really easy houseplants for beginners like I said Nicole is going to be sharing another five different plants so if you're looking for some more ideas make sure that you go over and watch her video and and make sure that you also subscribe to her channel I love watching her videos I think that she's hilarious and so cute so I hope that you enjoyed both of our videos and I will see you again in a few days Okay, bye. Bye. I'm so thirsty.